Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Side Talk. Tonight I have Monica Parkin. She is a speaker, an author, a podcast host, and a mortgage broker. <laughs> welcome to the podcast, Monica. Thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. So um, Monica wrote a book entitled Overcome Awkward, um, Overcome Awkward, Overcome awkward. That's what it's called. Overcoming, oh. overcoming awkward. Oh, okay. That's like, that sounds so weird. That's a common mispronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Overcoming awkward: an introvert's guide to networking, marketing, and sales. So we're going to talk about introverts tonight, but we're also going to talk about you know Monica. So Monica, why did you become a mortgage broker? What about that spoke to you? Yeah, that's kind of a funny story um, because when I first decided, I, well, I'd had a really good experience with a mortgage broker, but we had never actually met in person. We never talked on the phone. We did everything by email. So I, being a total introvert, thought, wow, this is a perfect career for me. I can just stay at home. I don't have to you know, get out there in the world. I can just sit at home in my home office and this will be a great job for me. I'll just crunch numbers all day. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the memo. That's, you know, that's a very small fraction of, of what a mortgage broker actually does. And, and there's actually uh, a lot of time that you spend networking, building relationships. Um, you know, there's actually huge sales and business development component to it that I was not aware of. So that was a bit of a, that was my oh hell no moment when I uh, walked into a chamber of commerce meeting and had to go and mingle. Yeah. So this is something that you chose to do um, way back when, like how many years have you been doing this? About seven years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I chose to do it because I like numbers. Uh, it turns out it's, it's a little tiny bit about numbers. It's a lot about people, but I've certainly come to love the people aspect of it, but it was an obstacle that I had to overcome. Hence the name overcoming awkward. So what were you doing before that? Before that, I was just kind of a, you know, stay at home mom taking my kids to school, um, little, uh, little, little side businesses and things. But uh, I was, I've always been an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember, but um, nothing, um, nothing of sort of that magnitude. Yeah. Okay. So tell us the high level, what does a mortgage broker do? Because I always wonder that. Yeah, well, the short answer is it kind of solves Sudoku puzzles, <laughs> but the the real answer is, um, you know, it's that matching that takes place between the consumer who's looking for a mortgage and the lender that has a mortgage to offer. And so there's all different lenders with all different kinds of products and offerings, and then you have consumers. So if you're a fit in the box consumer that just perfectly, you know, you've got perfect credit, perfect, you know, your job is stable you make this amount of money, you've got all your documents in order, you can just walk into a bank and, and get a mortgage. Um, if there's a bit of an anomaly, maybe you're self-employed, maybe your credit's less than perfect, maybe you're buying a rental property, you're buying a second dwelling, then all of a sudden you don't fit into every box. And, and that's where a mortgage broker can sort of help you navigate those differences. And then if you are the perfect person with the perfect job, the perfect credit, why not use a mortgage broker? Because they can shop you to 40 different lenders, find you the best rate, the best product, and really take the time to go through the process with you and make you a part of that process rather than just, you know, sign here. Wow. Okay. See, so we learned something new tonight. So, and then the mortgage broker gets paid. Is it like a separate fee that you pay or is it something that's worked into your loan? Yeah, so the client... Not always, but almost never pays um, out of their own pocket for the mortgage broker. That's a fee that the lender pays the broker for bringing them a client, essentially, right? So, so they'll get paid a fee uh, by the lender. Uh, there's exceptions to that if it's a private mortgage where someone's really, you know, on the their credit is really bad at it, but some reason why they really couldn't uh, qualify for traditional financing, and then they might be paying a fee to access a lender. But most of the time, that fee is actually paid by the lender. Oh, nice. And one last question about this field. How would somebody get on the path to becoming a mortgage broker? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to enter that uh, path. Uh, and I'm in Canada, I think you're in the US, but I think it's fairly similar. Some people have already worked at a bank or a financial institution, then they'll just add on the accreditation course, which is usually an online course. 
and and go ahead and get licensed, find a brokerage, find an, a place to match with that sort of matches your values and expectations. Do you want to work at home? Do you want to work in an office? Do you need a mentor? Things like that. Uh, other people will be like me and have no financial background at all and go ahead and take that course and then learn as they go. Uh, one thing I tell a lot of people, and it was a surprise for me, is literally nothing you learned in that course will be applied to your job as a mortgage broker. So when you you know, hang your shingle on the door and you start that day, you're really learning on the job as you go. And so I think it's really important to have a great mentor or someone to, to help you through those first few files. Nice. Thanks for sharing that with us, Monica. So did you become a speaker, a podcast host? I can't talk tonight. A speaker, a podcast host, or an author first? Oh, that is a good question. I became a speaker first. Yeah. And that was me uh, just wanting to learn to speak better. Walked into a Toastmasters one meeting. Uh, meeting. See, I can't talk tonight either. Meeting one night, found out I loved speaking. And then from speaking, I decided, well, maybe I want to do a podcast because I get to speak more and I get to speak to other people who like to speak. And from that, I kind of got this idea for a book. And even a lot of my book, I didn't type a lot of it I recorded it and then transcribed it because I'm just better as a speaker getting my ideas out wow that is a great idea too we're gonna explore that so would you consider yourself an introvert I used to consider myself an introvert I, oh, I definitely still am an introvert but I feel like I've evolved into kind of an omnivert if that's even a word I don't know but you know I used to really avoid social situations and, and hate them and now I actually do look forward to them but I also look forward to that time to come home and put on my pajamas and recharge. So guys I think that introvert um, I think that it's it's a it's misunderstood right so I looked up the definition of an introvert. So let, let me tell you what it says. And when I say guys, I'm talking to the audience, Monica. <laughs> oh, good. Like, who is she talking to? <laughs> well, okay. So um, let's define introvert. A person who prefers calm environments, limits social engagement, or embraces a greater than average preference for solitude. And I liked this definition, right? Because you prefer calm environments, limits social engagement. It doesn't say you don't have social engagements, right? And then there's another definition too, having a disposition that is taxed by social engagement and energized by calm environments, resulting in the preference for quiet solitude. So I always thought an introvert was a person that would just be like, have their head down, not talk to anybody, like not want to engage in conversation or any type of outings or social gatherings or anything like that. But as I've been going along in life, I've been le learning that an introvert doesn't necessarily mean that you don't like to have conversations or be around people, you know, I think there's a balance, but you 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 prefer to you know not be around like large gatherings a bunch of people and I feel like I'm kind of like a little bit of an introvert in some instances but yeah. I'm also very social yeah and I think it's a spectrum and I think it changes as you age and I and you're right not every introvert is socially awkward and not every socially awkward person is an introvert I happen to be both <laughs> not anymore but I definitely happen to be that introvert who also didn't know what to say or where to look or where to put my hands that like I felt very awkward uh but I think that was as a result of just being an extreme introvert for so long I just hadn't been in those situations um but yeah for sure I would say that's a great definition of an introvert and a great opposite definition of an extrovert right the extrovert being that person that gets their energy from social situations and starts to feel drained when they're you know solitary for too long Right. So what made you want to write your book, Overcoming Awkward? <laughs> yeah, the name got changed a few times, but um, I was actually, it was the beginning of the pandemic and I was sort of, we were all in lockdown. You couldn't go anywhere. I didn't have that commute to and from work. And I was sitting there scrolling through social media and I saw this ad pop up for a 30 day book writing challenge. And I was like, hmm, 
well, that's interesting because I've been wanting to write a book forever, but I just could never just like get the momentum and the time to do it. And I thought, well, 30 days, like I can actually, my kids said, mom, you can hyper fixate for that long, right? Because I have this habit of like digging into something and then being bored with it after a month. So they're like, a month is a perfect amount of time for you. And then I thought, you know, I've got all these old speeches, I've got presentations, I've got all these things in my head and each of those could actually be a chapter if I knew how to structure them and so the first question or the first assignment I got as part of that book writing challenge was what is something that you've overcome because that's that's really where you want to start with this book and I thought about the thing that I've overcome is that introvertedness that that you know I literally wouldn't even let my kids have friends over because if they had friends over then I'd have to get to know their parents and I'd have to talk to them and like it was just this whole like it's all just too much energy like I didn't want to talk to the grocery the clerk at the grocery store I was like oh that's too much work and now I actually really looked forward to those interactions I looked forward to talking to people finding out more about their relationships and and so that was definitely something that I it overcame. So um, where do you think that that introvertedness came from like was it the way you were raised were your parents like that like where does that come from for you yeah I don't know I I think some of it is actually your that's how you're born my brother is a total extrovert my dad was an extrovert my mom's a bit of an introvert you know I have two kids that are total introverts and one that's a total extrovert like in the pandemic my two daughters are like yeah we could do this forever like we could just stay home indefinitely and we'd be cool with it and my son was just crawling the wall so I do think it's your core personality who you are um just like some people have more of a, a right brain or a left brain or some people are more artistic some people are more sciencey but you know you can always cultivate that and you can we all have the capacity to change so I had to have a desire and a, a reason to change and then once I did I was like oh this is actually it's kind of just like learning another language once you get into it you do it for a while it starts to feel pretty comfortable so what sparked the change in you do you remember yeah, becoming a mortgage broker and, you know, showing up at work the first day and saying, okay, where's my first client? And they're like, uh, yeah, no, you got to go get clients. You have to go network. You have to meet people. And I was like, I don't know anybody. And so that sparked that journey of having to learn to uh, enjoy the process of, of getting to know people, of hearing their stories, building relationships, and, and ultimately becoming someone who really likes building relationships which incidentally is actually something that science tells us that introverts are really really good at even though they're not known for that they just do it in a different way so extroverts will do it on a grand scale they'll walk around a room they'll talk to 100 people they'll feel super comfortable an introvert won't build relationships that way they'll build them one at a time you know with one person at a time by really you know listening deeply asking deep questions really getting to know people so they're they're actually just as good, if not sometimes even better at building relationships. They just do it in a different way. Yeah, I could totally see that um, introverts would be good at that. Um, so when you started venturing out of your introvertedness and you started liking, um, you know, connecting with people or whatever, did do you ever have any moments of exhaustion or where you're like, okay, I've had enough of this. I need to go home. Like, do you feel that ever creeping in? I do. And you know what I really felt it the most is right after the book first came out, actually. And I was doing like three, four podcasts a day and TV shows. And, and, you know, every time I'd run into someone, they'd, they'd want to stop and talk about it. And, and my publicist or the person that I was working with, it was, was booking me on things. She's like, okay, you ready for another month? And I'm like, no, like, I actually, I think I need a couple of weeks off. Like I'm feeling really burnt out. And I used to be excited about sitting down and, and, and doing this stuff and I'm, I'm kind of dreading tomorrow and so I, I had to take like a month off and just like recharge go hang out at the book at the beach read some books you know and just and now I'm back into it and I've got that energy back but yeah there was a time where I was just like you know what I think I've I think I've actually burnt out my social battery and I need to I need to charge it up right so what will people be able to take from your book I think uh, a couple things. One is that, you know, you aren't who always who you think you are, that change is always possible. So if you think you're totally socially awkward or you're an introvert or that just because you're an introvert, you can't be good at sales, uh, that that's not true, that, that, that any of us can change. It's just a matter of, of, you know, one foot in front of the other and, and making the decision that you're going to do that and then taking baby steps every, 
every day. And the other thing is that introverts actually are really good at sales. They just, it's not something that's widely known. You know, when I first published the book, I'd have these people reach out to me that were just killing it in their field, like really high performing CEOs and people like that. And they're like, yeah, I don't want anyone to know, but I'm actually an introvert. How do I get a copy of the book? But they didn't want that to be public because it's almost like there's a stigma attached to being an introvert, but they're actually really good at their job. And so what I, I guess the other thing I want people to know is that it's it's not a bad thing to be an introvert. Like it, it can literally be your superpower in a way. Right. And that's what I was saying earlier about there's this big misconception about introverts. And I think that there really is because even I was confused about what an introvert was until I started seeing a lot of those characteristics in myself, someone who I thought was kind of like outgoing and whatever else. And I, I learned that just because you're, you know, you like to spend more time alone than out doesn't mean that you're not outgoing, you know, so absolutely, I think that a lot of people will um, benefit from reading this book and realizing that there's a spectrum <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it's not either one or the other. There can be some place in the middle or closer to the left, closer to the right, whatever. Yeah. So you mentioned something very interesting when you talked about writing your book, you said you recorded yourself and then you went back and wrote. And I thought that was so good because there are a lot of people who want to write books, but they feel probably intimidated by the process and think, oh my gosh, I want to write this book, but I'm not a good writer. I'm not a good speller. I'm blah, blah, blah. Tell us a little bit about that process for you. Yeah. So I did two different processes. So one is what they call the Pomodoro method, where you, you just put on some music that you like, just classical music or something, and you just set your timer for 10 minutes and you just write whatever comes into your mind. You don't stop to edit. You don't spell check. You don't do anything. You just basically regurge words. Uh, and so that was one way when I had time and I was sitting down at a keyboard and I could do that. Um, but even doing that, sometimes I'd kind of start to get stuck and I'd want to correct myself and it would stop my thought process. So what I started doing is I have about a half hour drive every day and I would start just hitting the record button on my phone and just talking like I would when I'm making up a speech, right? I just start putting out ideas and weaving together stories and, and, and get home and then run that through a transcription software, which would type it all out. And then I go back in and I'd edit it and turn it into you know, cut this out and add this I go, oh, yeah, that gives me an idea. And so I didn't exactly transcribe the whole book, but probably 50% of it was, you know, me recording myself and then going back and editing that because my mind doesn't get stuck when I'm talking the way it gets stuck when I'm typing sometimes. Yeah. Yep. That is fantastic, Monica. I love it. So that's a great idea. So people, if you're thinking that you want to write a book, or you have this great novel, this biography, whatever, just talk it out and do what Monica did to get it out, at least get it going, you know, so you can start the process for yourself. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And the software I used is actually free. I don't know if I'm allowed to well, not plug something, but I can Absolutely. I mention. Absolutely. Go ahead. Plug it. It's a script because I use it for my podcast too. Um, but it's, there's just a free level and basically you just upload it and it turns it all into text and then you can delete words you can move them around you can cut paste them into a document there's other ones too dragon dictation and things but that was really helpful for me yeah you said descript right yeah yeah I think I, is that what I said I mean that's what I said I think that's yeah the I think that's it but I, I just wanted to make sure people heard so yeah I've used that too for um trying to edit my podcast um it's a great program um so this is side talk on side talk I ask my guests to share an oh hell yes moment and an oh hell yes moment is a moment of clarity or success so tell us a moment where you felt very successful or um you felt clear about direction or something in your life um we want to know what that moment was yeah that's a great question you know i i I was thinking about this the other day and I don't know what happens, but every time I get up on a stage to speak, like I could be super nervous before I can forget everything. But the minute I get up on that stage, it's like it, all this power comes with me and I just feel so confident, so powerful. And it's like, it's sometimes I'm like, who even was that person? But like, that's always my, oh, hell yes. Like I belong on this stage. This is where I feel good. And I am like my true authentic 
self and just like there is nothing in my way and public speaking does that for me and I don't know why but yeah it gives me that feeling of oh yeah I belong here that's awesome I love it and that's coming from a introvert who is now an <laughs> intra extrovert <laughs> <laughs> so guys you can do it if you want to get up there and speak it, if it's in you you can do it all right monica thank you so much for coming on the podcast please tell everyone where they can connect with you and where they can purchase your book yeah thanks so much for having me today uh you can find me at www.monicaparkin.ca super simple uh book is on amazon audible kindle pretty much uh every every country and uh, yeah, if you don't like to read and you want to listen, you can hear it on Audible and you can find uh, uh, additional links on my website again if you want. It's just Monica with a C, parkin.ca. Awesome. Thank you, Monica. And guys, I know that this background has been making me look like a ghost. So I'm definitely going to fix it because it's driving me crazy. I might go back to no background because I know the people that are watching it are like, oh my God, that looks so crazy, right? I love the picture on the wall, though, your podcast cover on the wall back there. It looks so really cool, classy. But it I like just it. doesn't like, it's like, there's no perfect thing right it's all good there's it's there is no perfect thing and that's uh that's the other thing I figured out over the years the more I try to be perfect the more frustrated I get so you know what you get what you see is what you get exactly <laughs> all right Monica.